wouldn't it take a long time to train peeps on the f-16 and that's what we're going to talk about today i think we can get straight into it uh, since you guys are immediately asking me questions about the f-16 question so why are we talking about f-16s today it's not because f-16s were announced for ukraine it's because there was an exclusive u.s report a report from the u.s government trying to look at how long it would take to train ukrainian pilots who you know work on the mig uh you know mig 29s su 27s work on a different set of aircraft how long it would take to train them in the f-16 so they would be able to use an f-16 fighter jet effectively ukraine really wants f-16s they want modern western aircraft they want aircraft that's integrated with nato systems not only so in the future when they're more integrated with nato it'll be easier for them but also they want these modern aircraft so they can better contest the airspace over ukraine better intercept the missiles that are inbound for ukrainian cities and also have some more uh air to ground strike capabilities uh, a bunch of reasons why they want jets uh, the idea that they would get complete air superiority over the whole country in the near future while that might seem laughable even though a lot of things have seemed laughable in this war uh if they get f-16 fighter jets it's going to be a lot harder for the russians to try to even take advantage of the somewhat contested airspace they have established in ukraine so they want f-16 fighter jets but it has been uh there it has been established by the u.s government over and over and over and over again that they are not interested in sending f-16 fighter jets that's a position they had at the start of the war and that's a position that they still technically have right now even if the position is softening and one of the excuses that u.s government officials have given as to why they don't want to give f-16 fighter jets you know you hear some excuses about escalation you hear other excuses about cost but one of the excuses that was always made most evident and was pushed the hardest in the in the media space and on me was that oh it would take so long to make take these ukrainian pilots and transfer them from the mig system from the su system and transfer them over to the f-16 that i, I the one estimate that i uh, believe was given in committee by u.s government officials was 18 months it would take 18 months to train the ukrainians which is longer than this war has been going on so this war would have to more than double in length if we were to start training them today even though we still have we have already started training some of them on f-16s um and we would still not be even if you doubled the length of this war at this point we would still not be arrived at having these pilots trained enough to pilot f-16s that's what was emphasized to me that's what i saw emphasized in the media that's what was emphasized during the committee hearings and so a lot of people came to the re uh, came to the conclusion that well you know these are nice and these be cool for the future but for this war the odds of them getting f-16s in combat is very unlikely it's going to take so much time it's also going to be so expensive it's going to be all these things so let's concentrate on the patriot air defense system which is currently working right now as kiev is getting bombed as we're streaming uh, to take out the uh, the long-range missiles that the Russians have fired at the city. Let's concentrate on that. Let's concentrate on the air defense, because if we concentrate on the air defense, that's another way that Ukraine can try to stop the Russians from getting air superiority. Well, a report has come from the same government that had its officials make the 18-month statement. A report has come from them showing that the Ukrainians actually don't need 18 months they could train on f-16 jets in four months 18 months no four months that is a drastic drastic difference let's read about the report yahoo news has obtained a u.s air force assessment of two ukrainian pilots who outperformed stated pentagon expectations over two weeks in a flight simulator at a u.s air base Ukrainian pilots use uh, oh here it is uh, Ukrainian pilots use simulators in Arizona. The document, which was shared with a number of NATO allies who fly F-16s, contains a detailed assessment undertaken in late February and early March at Morris Air National Guard Base in Tucson, Arizona, home to the 162nd Wing of the U.S. Air Force. Two Ukrainian airmen, one qualified on the MiG-29 system, the other on the Su-27, were given no formal training on the F-16, according to the assessment, other than a brief familiarization. They were then tested on a flight simulator, conducting nine simulator events 
covering a total of 11.5 hours. Uh, the Here is the five-page report. We're not going to read all of it uh, since, you know, the, the general points that we need to get through are already uh, in this article. The Su-27 and MiG-29 are both Soviet-era fighter jets, which constitute, which constitute the bulk of what remains of Ukraine's Air Force. Both Ukrainian pilots were assessed by four experienced U.S. Air Force instructors, each of whom had clocked thousands of hours flying F-16s. The assessment, written by Lieutenant Colonel Jared P. White of the 162nd, concludes that the Ukrainian pilots were able to carry out a number of relatively technical maneuvers in their simulated environments, such as landing the aircraft after losing an engine in a scenario known as a flameout. After a single demonstration, both pilots were able to successfully land the aircraft from an overhead simulated flameout SFO pattern. There is relatively technical there is a relatively technical skill that must be continuously practiced throughout an F-16 pilot's career, the document states. Both pilots were also able to execute mock attacks based on the parameters communicated while they were flying in the simulator. Now, it goes on to talk about some concerns, uh, most of what, uh, which seem to be surrounding the fact that the F-16 systems were in English, and these being Russian and Ukrainian speakers, uh, it was kind of different, difficult for them to understand the instructions on the screens in the F-16, but these are, uh, I would say, very small concerns, considering we were looking at, again, 18 months, according to U.S. government officials, to train these pilots. And now we're looking at four months, with the biggest issues being stuff being lost in translation. Um, I do think that this is going to lead to a lot more pressure on the American government to provide Ukraine with the F-16 jets since this was one of the main arguments they were making it was that we can't do it quick enough now we know that they can so the only thing that's going to stop them now is either cost which so far hasn't stopped them before even if they haven't delivered a lot of their aid deliveries that hasn't stopped the spirit of the Biden administration on the ukraine uh, on the war in ukraine so besides cost the only other thing that's going to be stopping the american government from sending it over is going to be escalation the idea that if we were to send F-16 fighter jets over to Ukraine, it could be an escalation. Now, there is a solution to this, and the solution is having an American ally, if the United States isn't going to do it, agree to send over their F-16 fleet over to Ukraine, see the Russians again, do nothing in response because they've already played their cards, and then that would mean the risk of escalation is gone. We already saw that it was bluffed. And therefore, you can then encourage American officials to send F-16 aircraft with the only uh, real complaint at that point. Uh, it could really only be uh, a problem of, oh, it's going to cost too much. Now, there's one other thing I need to put here because I haven't seen anyone else talking about this. I haven't seen any other report from Yahoo News, from Business Insider, New York Times. I haven't seen any of them talk about this. There was a political report late last year that leaked about what well, it, was, it wasn't leaked. It was published by Politico, but it was about secret negotiations between the Chinese government and the American government. And what those negotiations entailed, a lot of it is still secret. But what we do know is that it was talked about American government officials agreeing not to send long range missiles and agreeing not to send F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine in return for the Chinese not sending weapons over to the Russians and in return for the Chinese having their generals, which have made contacts with Russian generals through training maneuvers, uh, convincing them and talking to them about if there is a scenario where Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, gives you the order to nuke Ukraine, please do not do it. Do not do it for this, this, and this reason. Um, I don't know if this agreement is still solid. I don't know if this agreement changed, if that was... Uh, eventually what they shook on and uh, formally agreed to, but we do know that those types of negotiations did go into an effect. And so far, the United States has not given Ukraine long-range missiles. The United Kingdom did. They've sent the Storm Shadow missiles, which has a range of roughly 250 kilometers and can strike every single Russian unit within the entirety of occupied Ukraine. Uh, and the other uh, thing we promised not to send, F-16s, we haven't said that as well. The Chinese have not sent over any weapons that we know of uh, know about we we found a few crates with a few machine guns that were marked hunting rifle rifles but besides that 
They haven't sent it over. They haven't sent over any uh, amount of weapons that is, you know, game changing to any degree. And so all the components of this supposed backdoor negotiation still seem to be in place. Uh, we don't know about, of course, the negotiations or the conversations between Russian generals and Chinese generals. There's no way for us to see that in public. Uh, so this could be very much still in place, and that could be something constraining the American negotiators, the American uh, government from sending over aid. But what this will not stop, as I've said uh, uh, they could do, and they could take this route, is having a foreign country like the United Kingdom, which they don't have an F-16 fleet, but just using them as an example, sending their F-16s over to Ukraine, breaking the ice on this, breaking the taboo on this, and then other countries jumping in afterwards, possibly the United States down the road. Um, this is also how the tanks were originally sent over to Ukraine. While there were tanks like the T-72 that were sent over from Poland, there were no large uh, Western, uh, there were no large amount of Western tanks, uh, higher quality tanks, more modern tanks sent over from the West until the United Kingdom agreed that they were going to send some over some of their Crusader tanks. And that uh, uh, that led the way for not only the United States sending over 31 Abrams, which have yet to uh, arrive in Ukraine till this day, but also Germany and other countries sending over their leopards. And so I do think there are more avenues than ever for governments across Europe to now send F-16s to Ukraine. In fact, the American government seems to now be kind of positioning itself to ready, you know, ready itself for this being the reality as they've released a statement. Uh, here it is right here being talked about by Michael Weiss uh, or Wes. I never know how to pronounce his name. He follows me on Twitter, so I should know. He's a senior correspondent with Yahoo News after all. He uh, quoted an article from CNN uh, saying U.S. officials told CNN the administration is prepared to approve the export of jets to Ukraine if that is what allies decide to do with their supply. As many of you may remember, one of the problems earlier in this war is that powers in Europe, European countries, wanted to send weapons over to Ukraine, but the Germans stopped them from sending German-made weapons to Ukraine. The Germans then later moved on that. And then those German-made weapons were sent over the Ukraine. Another country that this is a problem with is the Swiss. The Swiss seem to be moving on that now, which is actually revolutionary when it comes to Swiss neutrality. Obviously, it's not nearly as much as we would want. Obviously, it's a little bit feeling like too little too late when it comes to getting credit for this type of thing. But it is notable. And this is something the United States would also have to do. If they are going to send Ukraine F-16s, there are security concerns that come with that. If they were made in the United States, the United States does have a say in how these jets are made. Uh, these are usually this this type of agreement stuff, th these type of agreements for you know keeping these jets safe and where you can use them and how you can use them uh, and who you can give them to is usually hashed out in the treaties and, and, and uh, you know agreements that are signed when these uh, jets are sold to governments around the world. And the U.S. government seems to be indicating that they're perfectly fine if any of these jets get sent over. So in my mind, since the United Kingdom and the Dutch a few weeks ago announced that they're going to be starting a commission, they're going to be starting a, a movement, quote unquote, to try to get F-16s over to Ukraine. We now have been U.S. Air Force reports come out that one of the biggest objections to sending F-16s to Ukraine has just gone up in smoke, the idea that it would take too long, it would take 18 months to train them. No, now we're being told that it could take as little as four months to train them. And we now have the U.S. government stepping out of the way of F-16s being sent by third-party countries. For example, uh, like if like Poland wanted to send over F-16s or, or any country in Europe that has F-16 fighter jets. In my mind, the path for F-16s Burns has been is immoral, immoral, morally corrupt, corrupt bankrupt, bankrupt man. No, Mander, thank you so much for the primer being sub for 11 months. In my mind, the path for F-16s being sent to Ukraine has now been clearly let out, uh, laid out, not let out, laid out. And now all we have to do is wait and see.